Hello, everyone again. So I have again the honor to not start the lecture series, but also the tutorial series. And I hope you all look forward to actually do now something. So here we were again a lot talking about um, variable modifications, um, trypsin, the protease, and here we learn how, now how to configure it, that you can customize your search. And to most, uh, for the most experiments, so 99%, I would say, you can use the default settings, which is all already configured. But of course, um, there are maybe some cases when you work with new proteases that you want to also configure them. And also in terms of modification, as we just heard by Shivani, when you do dependent search, you maybe find a new modification and you want to include that also um, as all, that you can select that always for your variable modifications. And in that lecture or tutorial, we are going to see how you can do that. So you have probably already done it, but here I want to say it again. So please copy now all the data from your from your USB stick to your computer um, because you will need it. And so again, we were, well, I was talking about the Andromeda search engine. There we used many parameters for the search. And now I will talk about those parameters, how to configure them. So in your USB stick, on your USB stick, you have a folder with assignments. And there you can see the first assignment, and here you can read up what we are going to do. And also later on, when you want to repeat it, you can look it up and it tells you what you should do. Also, I will go through all the steps. I will show you what to do. You are, I try to do it slowly, and uh, you can also try it out with me. But if something is too fast, then um, you can also just watch what I'm doing and try it out then later at home. And also if there are any questions, my colleagues will run around and will also help you. Okay. So what we are going to do is um, we configure a new modification. We also configure a new uh, label here, a Silac label. And then we also configure a new protease and then a um, database. So as a quick overview, where you can find that in MaxQuant, so the modification and the label you find in the configuration tab at the very end. And there for both, you have the section uh, modifications here. And for the protease, it's the same. So configuration, and then here proteases. For the database, it will be on a different position. So here you go, uh, here you go then to global parameters and sequence. And I would say let's start with the first assignment to configure a new modification. So also, where do you get the information of all the modifications? if you have a new one. So a common database, which is online and accessible for everyone, is Unimod. And let's go there. But also before we go there, I also want to show you that um, which modification we want to add. So here we pick one that hasn't been configured in MaxQuant yet. So this is the hydroalanine from tyrosine. So, uh, Already I give you this information, what you can find in Unimod is that you see the composition of the modification, then on which side it sits, the name of it, and yeah. So I would say we go there now. I hope there is internet. Oh, good. Ah. So here you go to Unimode. If you go there the first time, you uh, see a login screen. 
but you can also log in here as a guest, which we are going to do. So then as next, you can see a dashboard that offers all uh, known modifications out there. And here we want to find then our modification. So we just, here is a search bar. There you can search for any field that contains this name. Then we click search. And here we see the hydroalanine from tyrosine. And so if we click then view, we can see uh, the details that we have already seen on the screenshot. And so from there then we take the information. So as next, we want to uh, configure this modification then in MaxQuant. And I think for maybe some, we open now MaxQuant the first time. So when you have the data copied from your USB stick, you go then here you see the content, and then in software, you go in there and then you see a MaxQuant folder. And this, here you click on MaxQuant, and then you can start it. So as we have seen previously from the screenshots, at the very end you see the configuration, and then here you can see modification. So we click on that, that's already uh, by default selected, and then in that list we can see all configured modification in MaxQuant. These are quite many, but there is a uh, here we want to add a new one. And so I would also first recommend, uh, look first up, is that modification already defined or not? Because you don't want to configure it twice. And you can do that with a right click on any place on the table, then you click find, and then uh, a little uh, dialogue opens, and there you can find, uh, look up in specific columns, but you can also try to find uh, overall the whole table. And here I look for the hydroalanine. And then I click find all. And because here I don't have any entry in that table, that means it hasn't been configured yet. And I want to configure it. So how do I do that here? So here I have uh, many buttons and it says already like add. But I would also suggest if you have never done it before, maybe it's a good idea to look already at something that is already pre-configured. So I will take here uh, Phospho because I guess that it's also well known and we can look based on this example now how we would configure a modification. So here we can see the name and based on this name, this is also the name that appears when you select a fixed or the variable modification. So that's how you, you can find it again. And then you can give it a description. This is basically here you can um, write anything that helps you to, to know what, what the modification means. And then you also see the elemental composition. And based on this elemental composition, um, and automatically the monoisotopic mass is, uh, is calculated. And then you see on which position in the peptide uh, the modification can appear. So this can be at any side on the peptide and it's not specific to any C term or N time N term or protein C or N term so that if that is the case you would configure that here. Then the, ne the next value that is uh, very important, I would say, is the type, because this uh, let, uh, helps you to distinguish like if we have a modification or if we are talking about a label. And if you have a modification, you select here or you, you keep it by default standard. Then also some modifications can uh, generate a new termini and this you would specify then here. Then what we can see here is um, that we specify the amino acid on which the modification sits. So here, in that case, we have serine, treonine, and tyrosine. 
And then here, because the modification, so phospho has a neutral loss, we can also specify this here. And then in case of tyrosine, we also have the diagnostic peak, which we can specify at the bottom. So again, it's always a good way before you add a new modification that you look up what is already there and to get an idea how, what you need to do. So now we know, so we are experts, we have seen how it should look, so let's add a new modification and for this we click add. So here we get, first of all, in the table, a new entry at the bottom which says new modification. And on the right side here, we can now um, modify that. So by default, there are some values predefined and we overwrite those. So here I go back uh, yeah, to the um, Unimod web page and then I can just copy paste those values so for instance, I say uh, dehydroalanine from tyrosine, I copy that and then I put it here. And then I just pick for the description the same. And as next we want to give the elemental composition. So here we also look up again on Unimod so we know it has this elemental composition, so you reduce the hydrogen, the carbon, and the oxygen. And so we do that here as well. So first of all, we delete what is already there. And then here we have a button that says change, and we click on it. And then we get a, a window that allows us to select elements. So either here you can select it from the uh, table here. So I think that was um, minus H. So I can select here um, hydrogen. Yeah, it's, it's here, and then with the arrows here, I can say plus or minus. In our case, we reduce it by six. And then, as next, we have, uh, we select carbon. So I do this now with uh, the drop-down menu. And also here, we reduce it by six, the mass. And the same we do with oxygen. So also I can just type O and immediately jumps there and here we do reduce it by one. So what we can see here that the monoisotopic mass is already um, calculated. So this should be uh, the same here uh, than on Unimode, which is the case. So we click OK and now we have our elemental composition here and also our monoisotopic mass. And the position, I think I remembered correctly that it can be anywhere. Let's look up again. Position is anywhere. And also when we look at the site on which amino acid this modification happens is, um, yeah, so here we specify that as well. So by default, we have already a selection, so we uh, remove that. And then we select our tyrosine. So here. And then we have our specificity. And I think to add this modification, there is nothing more we have to configure. And what is really, yes? What the, explain real quickly what the new terminus selection. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not so much the expert here. Um, if I'm not saying the correct things, then uh, maybe Jürgen can help out or he does already. Yeah, so it means if you have as a modification, for example, the, the gly gly tag for ubiquitination, then that modification would introduce a new end terminus, right? 
And then if, uh, for example, you are, in addition to that, labeling N termini, then that would get one additional N terminus. So that, that's how I mean, the software knows that it should put then another modification on top if, uh, if there's something that modifies N termini. For the gly gly modification, I guess in that situation you would have two N termini on the, the peptide if it's, and so that would be different than a modification that modifies the original peptide terminus? Yeah, exactly. So basically the software has to know that this modification that you introduce there would actually be like biochemically treated in exactly the same way as the N terminal the terminus that is already there, right? And uh, so that, that's what you specify there. Thank you. So that is exactly the type of modification that I want to introduce. So it's a probe that labels internal cysteines, but carries a ubiquitin, which then upon triptych digest will leave. So I'll have a chemical modification plus two glycines. So is, should I do that in Max Quant then? Then you say uh, the new end terminus. Yes, exactly. OK, thank you. Okay, then I continue. So now I really want to highlight that uh, if you have made your changes on that side, you need to click now modify table. So if I would click now other, somewhere else in that table, all the changes are gone. So click first modify table. And if I do that, also you will see here at the bottom that the values are changing. So this happened then. So at least now you can uh, switch between values in the table. but if you would start now max quant, you would not see the changes uh, suggested in your variable modification. And if, of course, you want to see that. So in that case, you have to click save changes, that all the changes are also saved uh, to the file system, that they are always loaded when you st uh, start max quant. So we do that here too. And now we are done with the modification. So. Let's look now what we have to do next. So here we configure now our new Silec label. And in that case, we want to configure um, uh, histidine 8. And so we again, as we have seen, we go to the uh, modifications configuration. And yes? Is it necessary to then restart MaxQuant after you save that table yeah. for it to appear? Because okay. the parameter loading is happening when you start it. So what we did here now is uh, first we added one. Let's now copy one. And so let's try to find a similar label. So here we go and look for lies in eight. And then we say find all. And it has... Uh, three matches, and so we can see here now, okay, this is lysine 8, and pretty similar configuration, so I say, okay, let's duplicate this. So again, we will get a new entry at the bottom of the table, and we can now overwrite this. So we have named it histidine 8, and yeah, I say histidine 8, description. I could also here uh, add the elemental composition, but this is up to you what you want to configure and maybe you have a special style in your lab or whatever, so that is up to you, whatever helps you. So here let's look again what we want to change here. So we have five heavy carbons and three heavy nitrogens. And so what we do here in this case is that we, so first of all, again, we delete the previous composition and then we change it. So again, we have, uh, I think, five heavy carbon. So what we do first is that we have to remove the light version. And this is uh, by default C and then we remove it, and then we want to add the heavy version. And this we do uh, by selecting the CX. 
and then we add five, and the same we do um, with the three heavy nitrogen. So first we remove the light version, we remove it, and then we add the heavy one with NX. And then we click OK, and we also see the eight Dalton difference, and we see also that uh, we have the composition here with the right value. And then we say, uh, because here we have type label, because why it's already there, because we duplicated the previous label, so we have it. And then as next, we need again the amino acid specificity. And here we remove the one that is selected and we add here histidine. And then we say okay. And so what we have to do next? Exactly. And then? Exactly, very good. <laughs> you passed the test. <laughs> Good. So we are done already with the, with the two first assignments. So now we want to configure a new protease. And so let's again, we have learned that this is in proteases here, so also configuration proteases. And also here it's a good idea to look first up to um, how, how the configuration works. And so let's here have a look at trypsin. Um, this is a bit smallish, so I will help you a bit. So trypsin cleaves after arginine and lysine. And so have, you have a matrix here where you can configure all different combinations where your protease should cleave. So here we can see that uh, in that row you define that uh, the enzyme cleaves after arginine and also if a proline follows. And here you would see that it cleaves after uh, lysine. So with, when we want to add a new protease now, we click add and then we give it a name. So this is also the name that appears then when you configure your search parameters. And I say, Histidine protease. And then you can add here a description. So here I say, I can select then, okay, it always cleaves after a histidine, but not if you have a, a proline. So you would configure it like that. And that's all what you need to do here. So you have, uh, based on this matrix, you can configure any possible possibility where it should cleave or not. So again, what we have to click. Yes, and then? Very good. <laughs> so we, have, we are already nearly done. So the final step would be um, to configure a protein database. So, what we are going to do here now is that we want to, um, yeah, search against a kangaroo rat. Uh, should pick another species, I can't pronounce it really. So, <laughs> should remember that for the next time. Um, so we want to download a kangaroo rat FASTA file, and so we have two possible databases online where we can do that. I think we have a question. Yes, we have that on the to-do list. That, that will happen. <laughs> Pardon? Okay, there is another question. Yeah. 
each time you guys release a new version of MaxQuant, do I need to add the proteases again, or is there a file I can copy over between? Yes, you would need to add this protease again, but there is also a file you can copy. So okay. um, the file format will never change really, or I think I'm not aware that it ever changed. So from version to version, you are um, there is no problem if you just take that. I hope there is also time. That's why I'm speeding up a bit to show you also where you can find okay. all those files, where we have the configuration, also where you see then the results in MaxQuant. But Okay, because we are talking already about it, I'll just show you. So here you have the MaxQuant folder, then you go to bin, and there you have a config folder. Um, and in that folder, you can also see, so first of all, uh, the modifications. So if all the config uh, modifications you have configured, you will see in here. And that file you can take then and copy it again f uh, to another MaxQuant version exactly at the same position. And you can do that with every configuration you do. So for instance, also when here is the place where you would add new contaminants if you have some. So here there's a contaminants file and also the enzyme configuration here. So that's the place where MaxQuant takes all the config and you can copy them between versions. So we have said, okay, um, we can download now faster files from two sources. And here it's one is Ensemble and the one is Uniprod. And so here we, we could go there. So let's uh, try out the first one. And let's see how we do that. So we say www.assemble.org. And here you click then on downloads. And there you have download database. And then at the bottom here you have uh, another a dashboard with all database da databases, but you can not only download protein, faster files, but also others. So here we uh, can look for it. And we can see here, here kangaroo red. And then here in that column protein sequence faster, we could also download it. So um, when you click on it, or let's click on it. So you can see here uh, the FASTA file, and here you would download all peptides. The Abinicio, I think, contains additional um, genomic data, and yeah. So here in that case, you need all, uh, all peptides, and that also contains isoforms of the protein. And we don't need to download it because maybe the internet crashes then. So I've already downloaded all these uh, FASTA files for you and you can find that on your USB stick in uh, FASTA or database, What's the folder called. So here data and FASTA, you would see those um, files so you don't need to download it. So the second source where you can find databases is um, Uniprod. And here we again look for kangaroo rat, and we get all uh, protein sequences. And then also here uh, you can select, okay, review, reviewed or unreviewed. They are just um, created and, and checked and approved, and the other ones are still need to be approved. But sometimes, because uh, you want just to have as many sequences as possible, you would also include those. But maybe then for the ones that are not approved, you would look in detail. So here, and then you can download those. And so here you can also select, um, do you want to download those with isoforms or without? And that's it. Then here, that's how you get the faster files. And also I want to show you here some information 
also what the difference is between those faster files. So also the, the content between those is synchronized, so you would uh, see the same set of proteins, but the format of those is different. So here, for instance, the header is different. You have also more information about transcripts and so on. But, and here in Uniprot, the header is different. And because the header is different, you also would need to apply in MaxQuant different identification uh, parsing rules. Because here, for instance, how it's done in Ensemble is that uh, you pick here uh, that ID and this proteins, so MaxQuant works with IDs within the, when it does the computational part and, and it's important that those ID are unique and that's why you have also to parse for those and in Uniprot you take um, the value between the pipes as an ID and that's why you have here different identifier rules. But they are already, so these are regular expressions. It, they can be quite difficult. So that's why we uh, give you a list of possible uh, parsing rules that you can get the correct ID out. And so here, where we do that, we go to sequences and here we uh, select the identifier rule, but I would say let's just try it out. So we go to max quant. And we change the tab to global parameters. And here we are already in sequences. And then we add. So here we can also add multiple FASTA files. So let's now go to our content of the USB stick. Then we go to data. Then we go FASTA. And I pick just from Uniprot, the kangaroo file. Kangaroo red, actually. So here, if you have picked the wrong one, you can remove it. If, uh, yeah, if, if, if you change, copy your data, maybe from one drive to another one, and you want to change the folder, that the path is again correct. And here we change the identifier rule. So we also have to mark, I mean, in that case, we only have one entry, so that is then easy, so we click here, and then we can see like the first one is the Uniprot identifier, and then up to the first space that would be the identifier rule for the ensemble. So since we have the Uniprot database, we select it, and then we click OK, so we have a change here. And then also um, in your output tables, then you can see a protein description. So you can also define a rule here. Actually, by default, it's always that. And there is uh, no need to change that, really. And it just gives you also in the output table more information. Then what I really recommend is after you have configured your FASTA file, test it. So here we click on it, and then we can see are those pass rules all are correct? And so specifically, or you should check the sequence, because if you don't have any uh, empty uh, columns here, then there is something wrong, then you need to check again. So this is really important, and also for the identifier. And so if you see the whole header, for instance, there um, in the identifier column, then there is definitely something wrong, and you should check that again, because this uh, value here sh needs to be unique. And so I think here it looks all good. And so we have configured it. There's a question. information is not used later. Taxonomy ID, if that information is used later? Yeah, the information on, uh, you have uh, taxonomy rules, or tax, uh, the description, you could change, I mean, the description you want to keep the same, but you could change the parsing rules to get something else from the FASTA header if you wanted to do that with the other 
yeah, in place can, of the other. You can change that. So also if your header has any taxonomy identification, you would like to parse out and have it here, that you are able to, to group those into taxonomies, you can um, add um, your identifier rule there. Yeah. But also so you can extract it from the header. I think Jürgen mentioned that already. So uh, you can extract taxonomy information out of the header based on the rule which you can define. But also you can give it for the whole FASTA file with um, taxonomy ID. So here, for instance, if I type 9, I mean, that's not correct yet now, but just an example. So I can really for... I can uh, type an ID and find the description for it. This probably will take, when you do it the first time, a bit longer because it reads in the first time the file. But soon it will appear, yes. Or you can do it also the other way around, like that you can find then the ID based on that. And then you also specify the taxonomy, but you don't need to do that. So that's not required for the search, only when you specifically want to define that. Can you please repeat what you said uh, to look for in the identifier when we write, uh, run the test? Uh, yeah, so, so you want to see why you have to configure it or where? Uh, what we need to watch for when we run the test. Okay. So here, again, when you run the test, you see there is the column identifier. And so the identifier based on the header information in the FASTA file, it extracts a certain value. And you need to see that you, first of all, don't have any empty values and that they are unique. So, and also easy to check if, if it works or not is if you have the same value than you have for the whole header then there is something wrong. So, but if you have Uniprot database and you apply Uniprot identifier rule, that is, that is fine. So only when you use some, some I think you, you can also like define your own proteins and then maybe you set up your own header format and then you have to be careful. But that is happening very, very rarely. So most of the time you download the data. Okay, I think we are done with the assignment. And so again, what I, I want to say is we have already checked um, where to look up where the contaminants files are. And also those contaminants files are, the sequences of them are automatically added to the database <coughs> when you select it. And what I would like to show you at the beginning is that where to find those parameters or that, so we have configured them in, in configuration. So we added a new modification, the hydroalanine. And now I want to show you um, that they are there when we, so we close MaxQuant. So we say yes. And then we start the software again. So we go to software, max quant, and if everything worked well, because we did save changes, so first modify table, then save changes, so those values are hopefully really in the files, so when we open now max quant, so we want to see them. So for the modification, I go there, say variable modification, and then I see, voila, our new modification. And so I think I also did the same for the digestion. So we have also here our histidine protease. And then if we go to type, I think here we should also see then our uh, histidine 8 label. So there are too many values now. I, I hope you believe it that it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I want to say thank you.